Okay, I have a cut here because I made a mistake in the previous video and that was that I didn't activate my environment before. Always activate your environment. And if you want to have the libraries you installed in the previous steps inside your Jupyter lab, um, then you need to activate the environment and then uh, run Jupyter lab once this environment is active. Okay, good. Now we see this here is my kernel. And now this here is my Jupyter lab front end. And in this, I can work on Jupyter notebooks. I can open terminals and co Python consoles. And I can um, open normal text files, which can, for example, also be normal Python files. Okay, so first of all, Jupyter lab has a normal terminal, like my normal standard Windows or Linux terminal. And I can, in this terminal, one, for example, I don't know, I can um, print my working directory, which in this case is home quiz Jupyter background. And I just can, I can run any, ki any kinds of commands, like I can in a normal terminal. But like I said, I can, okay, I can't because I have only one thing here. I, have multi I can have multiple windows in my Jupyter lab instance. Good. Um, this here is the launcher. Um, and in my launcher, I can also open a text file. For example, here I can, as this is a text file. Now if I um, list the files here in the Jupyter Blackboard directory, you see there's the new text file. And I can also rename that file um, to a Python file, my Python file.py. And once this is a Python file, I can, for example, I can run Python code in here. And now I can have the text editor here. And we see this text editor has at least some basic syntax highlighting. And I have a terminal here. And I can, for example, simply run Python, my Python file. And ta-da, we see it will print the result of 1 plus 1. Also, and that's what Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Notebook are famous for, is that I can open notebooks. So a notebook, like I said, is a combination of text, code, and results. And we've already seen this on Binder in Philip's video. I can make, so I have different cells here, and I can navigate using the keyboard. So if I, for example, if I press escape, I'm basically in the in the view where I can add, the, where I can work on sales. And for example, if I press the B key, I add a cell below, B for below. If I hit D twice, I'm going to delete a cell. If I press A, I'm going to create a cell above. So, and if to enter a cell, I'm going to press enter. So first cell, and to exit a cell, I'm press, so to run, exit a cell, I'm pressing escape. And to run the code in a cell, I press shift and enter, but let's, First, enter this cell, second, exit using escape, enter using enter, third. And now, if I hit A, I'm adding a cell above and B for below. Right, now in the cells, I can have either code markdown or war stuff. So war is simply nothing that runs. And if I try to run whatever's in there, so I run it using shift and enter or control and enter, and if I run this, it's raw, there's nothing in it. If I run the code, well, it tries to run it as if it were a Python file, and because second is no defined command, I can't run it. So if I, however, print hello here, and then hit shift and enter, it's gonna return hello. And what I see here, what n what's nice is that my Jupyter, my IPython notebook file, IPy and B, um, like I said, it shows me this here. It shows me the code and the results of the code. And if I have plots or open images, it will also show them here. And I can save that to a PDF or to HTML. And that's really nice. And also, additionally, I can uh, make sales markdown. So markdown, for example, is like a really easy formatting language. And for example, if I have one of these hashes, um, that's a headline. And I can also add another one. I think it's yeah, if I press M, it make, makes a cell markdown. If I press Y, it's code. When I enter it, and this is a second level, second level headline. And if I 
shift and enter to run it. Oh, uh, change it to code, not to markdown. Shift and enter to run it. It's going to be a second level headline. And that's really, really nice. And um, it's also it's fast if you work with the keyboard commands. And the references for the keyboard commands are listed here. So that's the Jupyter Lab reference. Um, it's not on the keyboard commands. Um, but you also have a markdown reference. So this here is markdown syntax, for example. I can also have a list. And then first element. That works too. So the markdown reference, it can't open it here. Why do you have less stuff now? Ah, okay, so there are more references. And there are somewhere also the cheat sheet. There. Yeah. So we have the cheat sheets also here. So this is a Jupyter Lab cheat sheet, and this is a Markdown command cheat sheet for which tells you, for example, what how to make a list or how to make headlines or how to include images. Yeah, and that's how iPython Notebook work, works. Control S to save it. Now um, I can here mark stuff as hint and mark stuff as a solution. That's um, of the Jupyter. Um, solutions extension which we have. I only see that because I'm a lecturer and you would see the sites differently. You can switch that in the config, um, but as it's not important for you, um, you're not going to see this. Okay, and then I can, um, or can I, I can file and I can save my notebook as, no, <laughs> I can export my notebook, export notebook as, and then I can export that, for example, as LaTeX code or directly as PDF. Now we see here that it makes developed media. So this here is a PDF now, and we see this here is the markdown stuff, and we have Python code including the results. So if you want to share code and results, using the Jupyter Notebook is a really nice solution and a really nice way of doing so. And I can also make, for example, HTML out of this, and this is basically how the GitHub markdown renderer works. So so we've seen on GitHub, um, so we have Markdown here too, and if I open um, Jupyter IPython notebooks on GitHub, and I don't open them in Binder, it will, as I showed you before, it will render them, because where well, you can simply export IPython notebook to HTML. Good. Um, this is where I am. And so as much for IPython notebook files. And then what's also really nice about this is that I can also add a Python console. I never want to see you guys using these two. Python 2 is dead. Don't play with that anyways. OK, and this here now is a Python console. And that's really nice because, as we already explained, that Python, it's IPython. It has an interactive kernel, IPython, interactive Python here. And interactive means I can, for example, in this terminal, a equals 1 plus 1, I can create variables. Now, if I run it, so it's still here. So I can interactively add commands. So um, e equals a plus one. And now I, by the way, um, shift and enter to run this. And then b is three. And I can work with this. And that's really, really nice if I just simply want to, um, how did I make, I don't know. So I also, for example, I always use the Python interactive kernel as a calculator. So if I have large numbers, which I want to add, Simply add them here and let Python tell me the result. That's really nice. What you can also do here is if you right click on a normal Python file, you can create a console for this editor. And I just showed you the nice feature of um, the interactive kernel in Atom. And this works for Jupyter, for Jupyter Lab 2. So if I'm now in this Python file, which I'm working with, um, mark text and hit shift and enter, it's going to run this in the respective Python terminal. So if I now hit, uh, let's say I make code a equals 1 plus 1, print a, and now I run this stuff, shift and enter, it's going to print 2. And if I now in this interactive, in the window that, like in the um, input field, for my interactive kernel, I say a equals a plus 1, and I run the print a again here, now a is 3. So these two now work together. 
that's really nice and that's basically the magic of ipython and that's really nice because if you're working on your homework you can run parts of your code and thus save variables and work with these variables and continue to work with these variables after for example inspecting them good but because i don't want to go into the details of python itself i'm going to stick with this for now so just so you know there's a lot of stuff which you can do here in uh, Jupyter Lab and Jupyter Lab is a really nice so I can also if I need a terminal as well I can additionally open the terminal and add that here and now for example in this file here I have even headlines so I can see using my ex lab extension um, which I have installed and I can for example also see here the overview so yeah there's Jupyter Lab and so on the Jupyter Hub, it's exactly the same. So like I said, the kernel is not one on your computer, but on machines from us. And if you log in, you get your own directory, as you see here. So this is the directory for my username. And everything works just the same way. All right, so let's wrap up. That's the cheat sheet. Look at these, they're really helpful for you. And then, yeah, how to open interactive kernel, new text file, create console. And then if you have the respective add-on, you can even open the variable inspector, which will show you the contents of the variables. I don't have it here, but I should have it here. Open variable inspector, ha. So here A is three, which we already saw. That's really neat. For that, however, you need the respective package, which I should have installed. Okay, that's it for this video. See you in the next.